Good afternoon. My name's Damien. I'm from a little place in the middle of England called Chesterfield. They're very, very famous for being rubbish at building churches. <laughs> I live in Chesterfield, my wife and my two kids, these little scallywags. This is Charlotte, who's seven, and this is Abby, who's four. Uh, they get up to a bit of mischief, but don't they all at that age? Fantastic. Um, what happened was that they got actually invited to go to the cinema with some friends. And this is the cinema in Chesterfield, run-of-the-mill cinema. And they got invited to go and see Frozen, sing-along Frozen. Has everybody heard of Frozen? Guess who had to take them to sing-along Frozen? Well, this was going to be my nightmare. But anyway, we, what we wanted to do was um, have a good time, which is great. However, they told me after the inv invite that uh, they had been to the cinema before. Well, sure, I knew that, of course. But um, they had a real problem with it, how loud it was in the cinema. So um, the obvious thing was to try and approach the cinema and say, ask, ask them to try and turn the volume down, but that wasn't a goer. So I thought, I'm a chartered occupational hygienist. I do the hierarchy of control all the time. I must be able to, have a sol I must be able to solve this problem. So I went away and had a think about it and thought about the hierarchy of control. So I got the two girls together and I sat them down and I said, now bear with me, how about we eliminate going to the cinema? <laughs> how do you think that well went down? <laughs> not good, not good. So I had to go back to square one, took a step back, thought about how we were then going to solve the problem if we couldn't eliminate the problem. I thought, I know. Let's try and substitute the problem. Let's not go to the cinema. Let's go to the park. Let's do something quiet. How about, let's read a frozen book? Or maybe even go to the library, because that's quiet. How do you think that went down? <laughs> Terrible. Absolutely appalling. So, not doing very well at the moment here. So, had to have a step back and to rethink. Had a really good idea. Engineering controls. I think I've nailed it this time. <laughs> Cardboard box and tape, you can do a lot of things. Thumbs up, we're on to a winner here. That was one daughter. The other daughter was having too much fun in the, in the, in the cardboard box, jumping around and having a great time. So the idea, this acoustic booth was going to protect them against the noise. I told them that, of course, they would have to wear it in the cinema. Went down like a lead balloon. So, had to rethink things. I then thought, hang on a minute, Charlotte, if you go and into the cinema for the first half of the film, <laughs> and then come out again, and Abby, you go in for the second half of the film, I've halved their noise exposure. That didn't go down very well either. She's not really crying there, by the way. So. Unfortunately, using the hierarchy of control, I'd failed. We've got to the bottom of the list. We've got to go through PPE. So I spoke to Charlotte and said, Charlotte, what sort of PPE would you like? And she said, pink ones. <laughs> of course. So between us three, we put together a working group. We did some toolbox talks. <laughs> we did some training and some education um, on storage and maintenance and that sort of stuff. We didn't really. They love their air defenders. They wore them all the time. They wore them during the day, they draw them during the night, they draw, wear them um, at tea time, uh, at the dinner table. They wear them all the time. Even so that um, Charlotte would say, she'd ask me a question uh, and then before I could even answer, she'd say, I can't hear you, Daddy. I'm wearing my pink ear defenders. <laughs> so I saw, I, we thought we'd solve the problem. However, I was wrong. What happened was we actually went to the cinema. There was a queue, a line of young little girls wanting to go to watch this film. And of course, they were the only people wearing ear defenders. And very slowly, they took their ear defenders off. I said, what's wrong? She said, I don't want to wear my ear defenders anymore. I said, are you kidding me? They're pink. You must wear them. And she said, no, I don't want to wear them anymore. And she'd been separated out and been made feel different. And it was that non-verbal communication 
that made such a difference so quickly. Thank you very much.